Hello again, everybody. Um, today I'm going to prepare, so you understand, with these sensors, 5 volts, 12 volts, and I'm going to explain what I tried to do yesterday. I'm going to do it over on the scope so you can see how to test a mass airflow sensor. Obviously, yesterday it didn't come out with, um, with the video like I wanted to come out. I'm going to do it over, and before that, I'm going to explain it. So you have to watch these two videos to understand what I'll be doing. Mass airflow sensor. We know it detects how much air is going through the air, the uh, the intake system, right? The air intake system. So there are a couple of factors here. First of all, there is a computer. This is a sensor. The sensor goes to a computer. Now, yesterday, as I as I showed you, there were three wires, GM, okay? The ground, black and white. Here's the ground. The power, 12, was the pink one. Okay? I will get to, the, to this in a second. This is what's in the module. The output of this is the, called the signal wire. The signal wire goes up to 5 volts. Back to the computer. This PCM is over here. So the output, which is the signal wire that we call it, can't go more than five volts question is how do i know it's five volts maybe it's 12 volts look at the fuse over here coming in here to give it to give this module this chip this module 12 volts only there is a fuse okay we didn't lose any voltage so we get the full voltage when you come over here in the computer the first videos that I ever made, I described what was going on. You see something, a resistor. You see something, a resistor, a vehicle speed sensor, a resistor. You see something, a resistor. These resistors are internal. You will not see this outside of the PCM. Therefore, what does the PCM get? 12 volts. It has to be turned on by 12 volts. It takes this 12 volts drops of voltage across this resistor which you will not see because it is internal in the circuitry of the mass airflow sensor it will give you the five volts okay it's taking 12 volts going to keep seven volts and give you the five volts it's like i owe you twelve dollars i'm going to give you five dollars how much am i keeping seven dollars okay that's the way it works. So the signal going back to the PCM, tell it how much air is going through the intake, uh, the 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 uh, air intake uh, chamber, so to say. It, it but in grams per second. Now, before we get to that, we're gonna do the intake air temperature. Again, the same principle applies. How do you know 12 volts? How do you know 5 volts? Let's take an engine coolant temperature. Look at this right here. See the resistor? Where? Inside the computer. The computer starts off with 12 volts. It drops the voltage in this internal resistor, which you do not see. Output is your engine coolant temperature. Let's take this one. Throttle position sensor. Again, three wires. Right, it even tells you over here, five volt reference. So it took seven volts. It came, it always has to work on 12 volts. It took away seven volts and it left you with five volts. Intake air temperature, same idea. Same idea, five volts, took away seven volts. Same idea over here, Man a manifold absolute pressure. Five volt reference. It took away seven volts on the inner internal circuitry of the resistor. How would you know this? You wouldn't know this. That's why I go to the schematic. I might have 12 volts, I might have five volts. I have to understand what I'm measuring and know what I'm measuring. That's why I always go to the schematic. The schematic will tell me everything. Getting back to this, 12 volts is goes to the pink wire to this transistor. This is called a Wheatstone bridge. 
these two points here go to a comparator. This compares these two points. The trick of this is it's like a bridge, Wheatstone bridge. This has to be balanced. By balance means these will have the same voltage ratio as this. So whenever this is balanced, you get zero volts going through here, here. However, since the air is moving through, you have three resistors, an ambient sensor, the temperature, and you have heated uh, sensors, two resistors here, so three resistors, four GM. They are changing resistance from the current, from the temperature. We want to keep them constant. We want to keep these voltages constant going into this comparator. One input, the other input into here. Obviously, colder air, warm air will change the current that's going through this and the voltage that's going through this. I want to. I don't want to get too technical. I tried to avoid this yesterday, but since there were there were some confusion, I have to go over this so you understand what's going on before we actually go and do it. Okay, so you have to watch this video if you're obviously you're watching it. You have to watch the complete video and you have to watch the next video about the scope so you understand the pattern that I show you on the scope. Otherwise, you will be lost. Like I said in the videos, this high level of trying that I'm doing, you will be lost if you don't go over the basics that I'm doing right now. So, well, great, we're monitoring the voltage outputs. We want to make sure that these resistors are balanced meaning that we get zero volts over here when we don't we turn on this transistor this transistor will go and adjust these resistors that's the best way i can say it to make sure that we are balanced that we have zero volts between these two points okay it's obviously going to change the resistors are going to these three resistors change we try to keep the current constant and we try to keep the temperature constant across these across the the ambient sensor resistors and these resistors try to keep them constant this bridge is balanced okay this is the transit in order for this transistor to adjust this we need 12 volts to the collector the emitter goes back to this to adjust it then we have another one over here we have another one right here so this is where we get the output okay this current flows from here this is the load resistor 12 volts drops drops this and goes over here to ground depending how much this is conducting the voltage will change across this transistor that's the main part this is called like a darlington so the emitter goes to this goes to the, to this base and the collector is always changing. So you're not going to have 5 volts. You're going to have less than 5 volts, 3 volts, 2 volts. But don't look at the DC voltage on a multimeter. You have to look at the signal on a scope. And that's what I was trying to tell you yesterday. Look at the signal. And I'll show you the scope that I'm using. So now I'm going to prepare you before I go out there. Because once the engine goes out, it is hard to scream and to make a point. As I've seen. When you do it hands-on there. But... The only way you can measure electronics, look at the signal, is with the engine running, like I've said so, uh, several times. You can't do with the engine off. I have to show you measurements. I have to show you signals. It has to be done with a car that's working. So you understand. How do you know what a bad signal is when you don't even know what a good signal is? Which has always been my argument for years and years of training technicians or students. How do I know... How do I know how much voltage should be here if you don't know what a good one is? How do you know that this is supposed to be 5 volts? Maybe it's 12 volts. Maybe it's 14 volts. How do you know? This is the signal output over here going back to the computer. This is what I tried to show you. You notice one thing. There's a pulse here. It's not a perfect square wave for GM. The perfect square wave would be that where the duty cycle on off on off will be 50 percent duty cycle we're not going to worry about that 
you see this the pulse is here then there's a little rounding off of the edge as we call it comes back down here a little rounding off here these are even let's make believe this is one cycle from here to here right another cycle from here to here if you go through cycle cycle these are pretty even these are the same these are the same what you're looking for is not only the amplitude what you're looking for is that they should be equivalent these pulses these waveforms should be equivalent as you see in this picture if one of them let's say one of them is up to here correct let's say one of them is up to here and the other ones are equal that's not good your mass airflow sensor is not good and this is what we're looking for we look we're looking for basically equality over each cycle each waveform individually okay i hope you understand that and i'll show you from the oscilloscope what i'm talking about for a square wave and how to use the oscilloscope this is what i should have done yesterday but uh, now I, I from the comments that you leave me i understand what i how i should prepare these type of videos doing hands-on okay like i said it's going to be very advanced and please watch the next video then you'll understand when I go out there. I'm going to measure the intake air temperature. How much should I measure for the intake te air temperature? How much? Compare it to the MAP sensor. 5 volts. It'll go up to 5 volts the most. Right? Not 12 volts. So the comments that I was asked, how is it? I'm, I'm confused about the reference volts. Don't be confused. When you have an internal resistor, you don't see it. You're not going to see it anywhere except in the PCM. If I take out the PCM and I open it, I'll show you the resistor. Okay? How do you know? Look, 5-volt re reference. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to go to other sensors to figure it out. When I came over here, I said, am I losing 2 volts? Am I losing 3 volts? When I came over here to the MAP sensor, I, I, I noticed this was 5 volts. I said, the most that this could go is 5 volts. Now, remember th something also. This will change with amplitude. So... You're looking for about 2,000, 3,000 hertz, an idle. When I press the, 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 the gas pedal, right, or the throttle body to open it, more air is being drawn in, sucked in. So these are going to change. Nevertheless, the change that we're looking for is the frequency is going to go up. So we're going for 3,000 hertz. This will go up. As I initiate or press the gas pedal, which is going to the throttle body, which is sucking in more air, obviously, right? It's going to go up, and that's what we're looking for. But the waveform should still be linear, uniform. This should still, in other words, these will be compressed, and you'll see it. These will be closer together. That means the frequency went up. If they spread apart, that means the frequency is going less when we put more gas. That's not good. Okay, we know they get dirty and all that, but my experience is just replace it. They come cheap. They don't come that, that, that expensive. Just replace it. How are you going to clean it, a resistor? I mean, really, it, you're talking about the these type of small resistors that are in there. I mean, you know, just change it. Anyway, doesn't matter. Anyway... What was I saying about, let's say, at, at, uh, at the altitude, it changes the frequency. So let's say you're in Colorado. The air is thinner out there, less oxygen. That's why people have, it's hard to breathe, right? Then this will change. The air will change. The fuel will change. The map sensor will change it. And all these will have to change. Since the air is a different quality of air in Colorado, right you're going up those mountains right at sea level is higher less air less oxygen right we'll have to adjust it so the engine can breathe otherwise we'll be choking the engine all right so we have to when we create these things not when we create i don't design it but when we when they design it right they have to make sure this car can go in every single environment in every single possible situation in the cold in extreme cold of Canada or whatever, in extreme heat, in extreme vibrations, in extreme altitude of, like we just said, Colorado. To make a car like that that could take all those is pretty hard. So I think sometimes we have to give credit 
to the designers. You're taking a car in the heat of 100 degrees, and you're taking a car in the cold of minus uh, minus zero degrees, and you're hitting bumps with vibrations. And let me tell you, like I told you, I used to work on these PCMs. Vib these things do not like vibrations. Surface mount technology, and I'll show you how to solder this, they don't like vibrations, especially at 70, 80 miles an hour when you hit a bump or a pothole or whatever, right? Those components are going to come off the pads. We're looking for this, right? They should be linear from here to linear. I'll show you on the scope that I was using. I hope this cleared up a few things so that when I go out there, you're going to see, don't use a multimeter. We have to use a signal. You cannot use them. If you need a signal, use the right equipment for the right job. I'm just saying this all for 30 years. You cannot use a multimeter. It will not do anything. All it's going to tell me is the DC voltage. That doesn't tell me. That doesn't tell me how the signal looks, and that's what I'm looking for. How the signal looks. That's the most important for me. Go to the next video for the oscilloscope.